Hey guys, Professor Doney back again. We're uh, in the middle of talking about static equilibrium. And if you remember, static equilibrium is uh, when an object does not move, which is some of the forces, equal to zero, and it doesn't spin, which is some of the torques. And sometimes for a static equilibrium problem, we have to use both of them uh, because we end up having two unknowns. If we have two unknowns, you yep. sorry about that. If we have two unknowns, that means we need two equations to be able to solve, and that gives us our one equation and our two equation. So we do have two unknowns in this problem. We have the force at A due to that fulcrum, and we have a cable here at B, and we're asked to find the force in both of those. So two unknowns, that means we're going to need both equations to solve that. So let's start out with the first one. We're going to sum forces in the y direction equal to zero. We'll call positive up. The reason we don't sum forces in the x direction, there's nothing happening horizontally. It's all vertical, so we go there. All right, so what do we have? Well, we have the force at A up, minus mg of the 100 down, minus mg of the other 100 down. We don't have a mass of the board. How do we know that? We weren't given anything and we have the force at B <clears throat> pulling up because it is a cable that all has to equal zero so we get FA plus FB equals this MG plus MG if we combine those comes out to be 200 G which is you know 19 whatever that is we'll figure that out alright so there's equation one can't do a whole lot with it because it still has two unknowns so we're going to go to solving with equation two, sum of torques. <clears throat> the way we're going to do that is we have to pick a rotation point so we can measure all the torques. Okay? So if we look at this, uh, depending on which one to solve for, if we want to solve for the force at A, we're going to make the rotation point at B. If we're going to solve for B, we make the rotation point at A. So let's pick B as our hypothetical rotation point. Uh, that's where we're going to measure all the distances for our torques. And it also means the force of B, since it goes directly through that, has a distance of zero. It sets up zero or no torque. So if I look at this, about that point, this 100 is going to try to rotate it counterclockwise. This 100 also counterclockwise. But this force upwards is actually trying to push it or hold it up clockwise. So when I sum the torques equal to zero, what I'm really saying is all the torques counterclockwise have to equal all the torques <clears throat> clockwise. So I'm going to get the 100 here. The torque of the other 100 has to equal, for this to be in static equilibrium, to be in sum of torques is zero, has to equal the force at A times its distance, which is trying to go the other way. That means I have MGD. MGD has to equal force at A times distance. That'll be 100, 9.8 for gravity. The distance, again, we always measure the distances from the point of rotation. So that first 100 is this far away, which is 2 meters, plus the other 100, well, my handwriting, 9.8. Its distance, the second one, is here, which is to 5 and that has to equal the force at A times its distance, which is way over here, which is, that's going to be two, five, seven meters. So I want to clean that up. That's going to be 400 G plus five, and that's 900. G equals force A times seven. And if I go through that, 900 times 9.8 divided by seven equals 1260. That's the force of A equals 1260 newtons. I'm going to take that, put that back in here. 200 times 9.8 minus 1260 gives me force of B at 700. So there's my quick answers because I'm running out of time. I know it's a little sloppy there, but we solve for the one, substitute in the other, and then bring it back here. We put in the 1260 right there. Solve this for F of B. And we get the answer right down there. So, hope that works out. And we'll see you next time.